All right, so let's finish this up by getting a quick and basic uh, scattering tool that allows us to scatter our grass clump around uh, our little terrain here. All right, so this will kind of, you know, show you the basic or the fundamental way of getting, you know, these particular assets built with Houdini in the Houdini engine. All right, and so it really completes like a, a nice little pipeline, uh, something that you could build all entirely on your own without the need for programmer help. All right, so you're building your own geometry tools. All right, so let's create, for this particular uh, HDA, we need to create a subnetwork. And the reason for that is because we're going to be instancing objects. All right, so I want to be able to take advantage of, you know, instancing these guys and retaining their, their LODs and stuff like that. So I actually need to instance them instead of just merging them into one piece of geometry. All right, so in this subnet, or at least what I'm going to call this subnet, is IP uh, clump scatter. All right, and I'm going to jump inside, and we don't need our inputs for this particular one. Uh, so I'm going to jump inside, and I'm going to create a geometry node here, and I'm going to create an instance node. All right, and this, this instance node is going to be the, the node that's responsible for instancing our little grass clumps around. All right, so in this first geo node, I need to um, handle the terrain. So we're going to handle terrain like so. So I'm going to jump in there and I'm going to do an object merge. And this is going to allow us to get the terrain from our terrain HDA. So I want to get it and move it into this object. All right. So for testing purposes, I'm just going to get the result from this terrain generator node here in Houdini. All right. We'll replace it with the, the terrain that we created inside of Unity there. All right. So now we have our terrain. And what I want to do is I want to scatter some points. All right. So we just want to go and drop down a scatter node. Okay, there we go. So now we have points that are relatively evenly scattered along this entire uh, grid here. Uh, but I want a little bit more control. So let's just do something really quick here for fun. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle node. And what I'm going to do is just pull out the green value. All right, so I'm just going to get the green channel and pump that into our density. All right, so if you remember, the density allows us to control where the points get scattered. All right, so I'm going to get that from our at cd.g channel all right so it creates that density value for us pretty cool and what i want to do is go to my scatter node and turn on the density attribute all right and we're going to turn off our relax iterations down here and that will make them basically pool around those those green areas so you can see they're kind of missing the the brown areas in, in most spots there all right so that sets up the scatter um, let's go and basically just output this then. So I'm just going to drop down a null node. And we're going to say out uh, points like so. All right, so we want to get all these points now and send them over to the instance node. All right, so we're basically taking all the output from this guy. And we're going to send them over here using an object merge again. So this is how you, you, know, you start to shuttle data around your networks. All right, so we're going to import our points into this object. So I'm going to go and get the points from our handle terrain node. All right. And what I want to do is drop down a wrangle node. And now this is something that is very uh, Houdini engine specific. So I'm going to call this node our instance adders. Now the specific part about Houdini engine is that it's looking for very specific um, attributes. So if you go to the Houdini engine for Unity documentation and click on the attributes and groups, you'll see that what we're looking for is this Unity instance attribute. So this is one of those built-in uh, attributes that the Houdini engine is looking for. All right, so if we provided a path that's relative to the assets folder, like, th like this, this is a great example. So if we provided that path, then we'll be able to instance those objects onto our points. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to say s at Unity underscore instance. So that attribute value that the Houdini engine is looking for is a string. That's why we put the S in front of it. Okay. So it's going to take in a path and our path is a path to our grass clump. And this path has to be relative to the assets folder. And so we can get that from our copy path option here. So I'm going to click that, uh, go back to Houdini over here and just paste that in between the quotes. And there we go. And that my friends is how we do that. All right, so let's go and turn this into an HDA really quick. So I'm going to say create digital asset and we are going to remove all this stuff. There we go. 
clean up the name, hit accept, and it'll warn us about the object reference that we have inside of there. And that's fine. I'll show you guys how to fix that just really quickly here. All right. So whenever you get these object reference errors, it's because you have a, a path to the OBJ. So currently uh, we're looking for OBJ, clump scatter, handle terrain, and then get terrain. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to have those uh, hard-coded paths. So what I'm going to do is select this particular option here and hold down Alt and middle mouse click. And that will put this up at the type properties level, so at our HDA level. And I'm just going to call this the terrain. All right, and we're going to remove that built-in path there, that hard-coded path. All right, so you can see it didn't complain anymore. Cool. All right, so one other thing we want to do to clean up is we want to be able to make sure that we don't have any other hard-coded paths. So this is a relative path right here. It's relative because we have dot, 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 right? And that's basically saying I'm going to get out of this node. I'm going to jump up again and then jump into this node, basically, and get the, the data from there. So we're all good there. All right, so the next thing I want to be able to control is the amount. So I'm going to promote that using the alt middle mouse click, and we'll call this a clump count. And I'm going to limit that to something like 5,000. All right. And 1,000 is great for the default. We'll hit apply and accept. And we'll jump back up. I'm just going to right click on it now and say save node type. And then let's go back into Unity. And we will transfer that new clump scatter HDA into our Unity project. All right. And then let's go and drag and drop that into the scene. And there we go. So now we have our clump scatter. All right, so what we need to do is we need to provide it our HDA. All right, so I'm going to switch this input type over to HDA because we're going to provide it the terrain generator, and that is an HDA. And there you go. We now have a bunch of clumps. All right, and you can see that we have a bunch of uh, instances down here that we could change out to if we really wanted to. All right. And we also have all the instances right here. All right, so uh, I could pump this up to something like 2,000. All right, and it goes pretty fast. So now you got a bunch more. All right, pretty cool stuff. And all this stuff is taking advantage of all the geometry instancing uh, techniques or the, the GPU instancing. So it's really light on draw calls and stuff like that. It's nothing crazy. All right, so. Uh, let's do one more thing here. Let's actually uh, just randomize all the rotations because if you take a look, they're all basically rotated exactly the same. So just add a little bit more uh, realistic touch to it. So we can come in here and uh, what we can do is let's randomize the rotation. So I'm going to go attribute wrangle. All right. And so uh, we could also do scale too. So we'll do... Um, We'll do transform adders. All right, so in here, what we want to do is we want to create a random rotation. So I'm going to say float uh, angle, and this is going to be equal to a CHF, so it's going to be a user-defined angle. All right, so something like, you know, 45 degrees. We want to basically create a, a random rotation between negative 45 and 45. All right, so now we have that angle slider there. Okay, and let's just set it to 45. That'll be good. And what I want to do is I want to uh, create a random angle now. So I'm going to say float rand angle. And this is going to be equal to fit uh, zero 01 random. We're going to take the current PT number as our seed value. And we're going to say we want to go between the negative angle and the max angle, which would be something like 45, or in this case it is 45. And basically, we want to do the same thing for the min and max scale, but this time we need two floats. So I'm going to say float uh, min scale is equal to chf uh, min scale, like so. And then we're going to do float max scale is equal to uh, chf uh, max scale, like so. And then we're going to say that our at p scale. All right, is equal to fit uh, zero one. Now we're going to do the rand pt again. So rand at pt num. Okay, and we are going to give it the min scale and the max scale. That'll give us control over the scale. 
All right, one thing we need to do up here is make sure that we provide the rotation. So I need to say at rot is equal to quaternion. All right, we're going to give it that rand angle. Okay, and we want to give it a rotation uh, axis. So in this case, the y direction, so 0, 1, 0. All right, so now we ha have all of our rotation properties on there, which is great. And we have our instance path, so everything's good to go. Uh, one thing we will want to do is uh, give the user the ability to change those min and max values. All right, so we need to jump back in here. And we also need to create them. So there we go. So I'm going to promote the angle, min and max scale. All right, so angle is going to be a value between uh, 0 and 180. All right, with a default of 45. Our min scale is going to be, let's say, 0.5 or anywhere from 0.0 or 0 0.1 uh, to 10. And our default is going to be 0 0.5. All right, these are just kind of values that I know work roughly and our max is going to be 0 to 10 and our max default scale will be like 1.2 or something like that. Hit apply so you can see now they're all hooked up. All right so that's pretty good so I think I'm going to put all those properties into a scatter folder. So I just drag and drop a uh, scatter folder or a folder out and call it scatter and I do like to set these two collapsible for unity. All right, so with that, I'm going to hit apply and accept. And we're going to save our HDA. And we're going to jump back in Unity here. Make sure we copy over our new HDA. And then what we can do is come into the clump scatter node here and just hit rebuild asset. And what will happen is it'll rebuild all the properties. And you can see now I have my clump count all ready to go here. All right. Now we're scattering a bunch of objects now. I can change the minimax angle. You can see they're spinning. Different angles. Now we can change the scale. Let's do something crazy. There we go. Pretty cool. All right. There we go. So there. That is what I'm talking about. That is how we go about creating grass clumps and then, you know, scattering it onto a terrain all right and uh, that's basically the full pipeline there there's so much more we can do with this and uh, like i said before i want to you know, make a more of a, a mega course around just all the things that you can do with uh, the houdini engine it's really powerful it's just you got to get used to you know how to develop for it basically uh, but it's an artist driven development process not so much of a programmer one okay so i'm going to leave you guys there uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.